Well, there have been a number of recent developments happening in the financial sector of late, both overseas as well as here at home. With us this evening to discuss the details is investment advisor Charles Abraham. Good evening, Charles. Good evening, Monica. A bit of a drop on the share market there today. Any particular reason? I think there's always going to be some profit taking. We've, we've seen it it's uh, especially strong run up until the Christmas period. So now there'll be people looking to perhaps take a little bit away to spend in the shops and just generally boost the economy that way. The other big news uh, this week is that the warehouse have bought uh, Snow Lemmings. Why have they done that? A good question. Um, the chairman of the warehouse has described it as a game changer. Uh, what it does for the warehouse is give them some access to some big brands that they've previously been denied. So perhaps it'll attract more customers in. It gives them some property that they can perhaps shuffle around. But as one commentator said, this could be a, a what's called a Hail Mary pass. And in American football terms, that's a desperate play towards the end of the game when you throw everything into a, a ploy that might not succeed. Mm. So for the warehouse, there's quite a strong execution risk here. They're venturing into something that's not their normal forte. So let's see if they can pull it off. Now there's a bit of a rumour going around that Chorus may not be able to roll out national broadband by 2019. What's the story there? Well, Chorus have been blindsided by the Commerce Commission's determination on the price that they um, should be able to charge for their copper. And it's such a significant reduction that what they are suggesting is that they won't have the capital going forward to put into rolling out this ultra-fast broadband. So there's a bit of an issue for the government here in that if, the, if this um, pricing does come into effect, then will Chorus be able to deliver? And that's the question. Hmm. Now to the Kiwi dollar, how's it doing? Strengthening, as you noted. And we'll probably con continue to see a bit of that. Interest rates in Australia were re recently reduced not much chance perhaps of New Zealand rates reducing in the near future. So as before, New Zealand's seen as a good place for overseas investors to put their money and that's going to keep the currency up. And now over to America and how's that fiscal cliff of theirs looking in the lead fiscal up to Christmas? Cliff. There's some severe brinkmanship going on there. The, the parties are pretty well entrenched and it's going to be a question of who blinks first. Mm. So what you might see there is the markets react badly, which then gives one of them a wake-up call to do something. What's happening in Europe with their financial situation? The Europeans, in the typical European style, are working things out. I mean, they've done this sort of thing for hundreds of years. And um, our, our view is they'll figure it out, but it will be a typical European way. We don't see any great um, calamity happening, but it's just that they'll stumble on and eventually get there. Mm. And are we likely to see any more sales of particularly large farms in New Zealand to overseas clients? Well, they, there's always the potential for it. Um, the, the Crafer Farm situation, which was the one that's really topical, was very unusual in that it was an ag aggregation of a bunch of farms. But as always, uh, there's interest from overseas in New Zealand farming as other people want to protect their food supplies. Is the situation being monitored by the government? Well, it's not so much the government, but th there is the, the, the body, the Overseas Investment Commission, that does look into these things. So they always have to be approved, and so each one's on its own merits. And it, it's supposedly independent of any government interference. Mm. Investment Advisor Charles Abraham, thanks very much for your time. Thank you.